we can classify the cancers uh, in different ways. The first way is classification according to tissues of origin. Uh, classification according to, and the second way is classification according to degree of aggressive growth. Uh, so the second classification, for second classification, we can classify the tumors as benign or malignant. So this is uh, classification of tumors, okay? Not cancers, classification of tumors. Because if it's benign, it's not cancer, it's uh, benign tumor. So according to uh, aggressiveness of growth, the tumor can be benign or malignant. There are two groups of tumors, benign tumors and malignant tumors. Benign tumors are tumors that grow locally without invading adjacent tissues. So it doesn't go anywhere. It stays there where it started and it cannot metastasize, it cannot uh, invade. But malignant tumors are tumors that invade nearby tissues and spawn metastasis. So if the tumor cells can move out from their original location, and if they can form new colonies of tumor cells, of uh, tumor masses, then we call it malignant tumors. So cancers are malignant tumors. But there are also some diseases caused by benign tumors. Benign tumors are all not always good. Sometimes benign tumors can cause diseases as well. Great majority of primary tumors in the body is benign and harmless, usually, not always. But there are exceptions. In rare cases, benign tumors may cause diseases other than malignant cancers. In those cancers, expansions of these masses cause them to press on vital organ, just pressure, physical pressure. That causes uh, organ or uh, that prevents the, uh, the organ to function correctly. Some benign tumors may cause release of high levels of hormones if they're uh, formed in uh, the hormonal glands. For example, thyroid, ad thyroid adenomas cause hyperthyroidism. Pituitary adenomas cause acromegaly. Uh, and there are some other examples as well. Adenoma means pre-malignant epithelial growth. So tumor uh, arise from epithelial cells, but which is not malignant are called adenomas. So epithelial tumors, we talk about, I said epithelial tumors, what are they? There's a finger, hold on. So we say it's epithelial tumors. That means there are some other tumor kinds as well, but most of the tumors are epithelial tumors, the tumors which arise from epithelial cells. Tumors arise from uh, many specialized cell types. The majority of human tumors arise from epithelial tissues. Epithelia, which means epithelial tissue, epithelial tissues are the sheets of cells that line the walls of cavities and channels, or in the case of skin, serve as the outside covering of the body. So the epithelial cells or epithelial tissue are lining tissues, the sheets that cover uh, the body parts. That can be the outer surface of the body in case of our skin or uh, organs with the cavities. The epithelial cells, epithelial tissue covers uh, the uh, cavities of those organs. For example, the inner side of uh, interior side, inter interior surface uh, of the intestines or interior surface of lung, etc., etc. Uh, 
Uh, that's correct. That's not, uh, they also adapt, adaptate very quickly. Okay. The normal tissue, con normal tissues containing epithelia are structured similarly. So the epithelial uh, tissues, structure of epithelial tissue are similar in different organs. So they have a, a common structure. So there are, in the structure of epithelial cells, there are uh, squamous cells which cover the organs, which cover the other parts. There are some cells which are responsible for secreting the materials, secretory materials. Uh, and they are covered by, or they are connected with connective tissue. Connective tissue is another tissue. Okay. Basal lamina. That's another term. Beneath the epithelial cells, a structure called basement membrane or basal lamina lies. Basal membrane separate epithelial cells from the underlying layer of connective tissue, which is called stroma. Basement membrane has two important functions. One, scaffolding. Two, attachment of signal molecules. All right. So basal lamina is one of the issues we are going to talk about. Okay. Let's take a break. Uh, I want to talk about the structure of epithelial tissue a bit more. So I said epithelial tissue or epithelial tissues are the tissues that uh, cover the organs, outer surface or outer surface or of our body and the internal surfaces of uh, our organs with their cavities. In this picture, you can see an electron microscope, scanning electro electron microscope, a uh, micrograph of uh, an epithelial tissue. And so these are epithelial cells, those spherical things. These are epithelial cells. And underneath, there is another type of tissue, which is connective tissue. Connective tissue is made up of extracellular material more than cells, which are usually composed of, uh, which are mostly composed of uh, fibrous proteins like collagens. And this connective tissue, like you can understand from its name, connects different tissues of organs and they bring different tissue elements together. They connect them to each other. But since these two are two different kinds of tissues, two different structures, we have to separate them. They must be separated. And the structure that separates epithelial tissue from connective tissue is called basal lamina. It's also called basement membrane. So this sheet-like structure, this lining structure is basement membrane. It's very hard, solid structure uh, of fibers, fibrous proteins, which prevents the cells to move from their own tissues and uh, go into the neighboring tissue. So this is the border. Basement membrane or basal lamina is uh, the border between epithelial tissue and connective tissue. So in the connective tissue, you can see collagen uh, fibers here. And these are the, uh, some of them are uh, larger fibers, some of them smaller fibers, and there are uh, connective tissue cells. The connective tissue surrounding the epithelial tissue is called stroma. So basement membrane is a very hard, solid, impossible, almost impossible to pass by the cells, uh, a strong structure, a border between two different kinds of tissues. So this is three-dimensional structure. And in the next picture, you can see 
transmission electron micro micrograph. Um, this at this point, you can see epithelial cells. These are epithelial cells. This is one cell's nucleus. This is the other cell's nucleus. And these are elastin fibers, collagen fibers, uh, which means this is the uh, connective tissue. And between the epithelial cells and connective tissue elements, there is basement membrane, as you can see here. So this is basement membrane. And this is another picture. Okay, this is another picture uh, showing us the uh, tissue architecture. This is the lumen. Lumen means uh, the cavity inside the organ. Cavities inside the organ. This is uh, the diameter you can see uh, from the other part, other side. As you can see, these are okay. These are epithelial cells single layer epithelial cell. So there are different kinds of epithelial cells. Some of them are single layer, some of them uh, are multiple layer. And there are different types of epithelial cells, cubic epithels, cylindric epithels, and uh, squamous epithels. So this one, this blue thing is basement membrane. It's the structure between epithelial cells, epithelial tissue, and connective tissue. All right. Uh, let me explain the, let me try to explain the connective tissue, uh, epithelial tissue and connective tissue a bit more. I'm gonna share now. In the previous picture, you saw the epithelial cells. So epithelial cells are something like this. This is one cell. This is another cell. This is another cell. And the one. And they have their nuclei. So this is epithelial cell uh, layer and underneath the epithelial cell layer, uh, how can I change the color? If I can change the color, color, it will be very nice. Underneath the epithelial tissue, there are fibers, collagen fibers, and some other fibrous proteins and there are connective tissue cells here so this is the connective tissue as you can see their morphology is different uh, and There is a border between epithelial cells and connective tissue, which is composed of uh, collagen fibers. So this is basal lamina. Okay basal lamina and this area connective tissue and this part the top part is epithelial tissue okay did you understand basal lamina Let's describe what basal lamina is. Beneath epithelial cells, a structure called basement membrane, which is also called basal lamina, lies. 
So there is a, a border between uh, connective tissue and epithelial tissue, which is called uh, basal lamina. Basement membrane separates epithelial cells from underlying layer of connective tissue, and that connective tissue part is called stroma. So stroma is the connective tissue part which, uh, which is underneath the epithelial cells. Basement membrane has two important functions. Basal lamina has two important functions, scaffolding and attachment of signal molecules. We are gonna see uh, these uh, in the future lectures. So next uh, subject is carcinoma. The most common human cancers, 80% of human cancers are carcinomas. Carcinomas are the cancers of epithelial tissue cells. I think I told you about these two, but we can repeat. Epithelial cells arise from three primitive cell layers in early embryo. Um, so if we classify the carcinomas, most carcinomas are classified according to two functions of epithelial tissues. One, squamous cell carcinomas, which arise from protective epithelial cells, and adenocarcinoma, which arise from uh, secretory epithelial cells. Secretory epithelial cell means epithelial cells that secrete the substance. So first type, um, I want highlighter. First type is squamous cell carcinoma. Squamous cell carcinoma. These are prote uh, These are the carcinomas arise from the uh, protective epithelial cells. And the second type is adenocarcinoma, which arises from secretory epithelial cells. So in this case, we can say there are two functions of epithelial cells, or there are two kinds of epithelial cells according to their functions. Squamous cells or protective epithelial cells, and second, secretory epithelial cells. Those are the cells that secrete the liquid material. And the cancers arising from the first type are called squamous cell carcinomas, and the carcinomas arising from the secretory epithelial cells are called adenocarcinomas. Can, uh, are cancers arise from only epithelial cells? No. There are also cancers that arise from non-epithelial tissues. So the other kinds of tissues can produce cancers as well. There are also three groups of cancers arise, arise from non-epithelial tissues. One, sarcomas. Two, leukemias and lymphomas. And three, neuroectodermal tumors. Sarcomas, the first group, are the cancers arising from connective tissue cells, various connective tissue cells, uh, which has mesodermal origin, uh, which is called mesenchymal cell types, fibroblasts, adipocytes, osteoblasts, myocytes, and endothelial cells. So in here, I want you to notice uh, two terms, mesenchymal, mesenchymal cells, mesodermal origin. So uh, this is embryonic origin of the cells, mesoderm. So there are three embryonic layers. I'm gonna show you the picture in a few minutes. Ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. And all our cells arise from these ancestor cells. So the cells arising from mesoderm of the embryonic, uh, mesodermal embryonic layer are called mesenchymal cells, mesenchymal cells. Those are uh, the connective tissue is one of the tissues that arise from mesoderm. And fibroblasts 
are deposits. Fibroblasts are uh, connective tissue cells. Adipocytes, adipocytes uh, are not connective tissues. Those are uh, kind of connective tissue, we can say, but those are fat cells, fat tissue cells. Osteoblasts, um, bone cells, bone producing cells. Myocytes, muscles, endothelial cells, the epithelia-like structure covering the inside of covering inside of uh, the vessels blood vessels the second group are leukemias and lymphomas these are also called uh, hematopoietic cells uh, sorry uh, hematopoietic uh, cancers hematopoietic cancers uh, two groups leukemias and lymphomas so these are blood forming cells and the third group are neuroectodermal tumors so we have uh, we have epithelial cell carcinomas and non epithelial carcinomas epithelial uh, sorry um, if the epithelial cancers are called carcinomas cancers of non epithelial tissue are not called carcinoma they are sarcoma, leukemia, lymphoma, and neuroectodermal tumors. Okay? Did you understand? All right. At this point, there is another term, transdifferentiation. Switching of tissue lineage and resulting an entirely new set of differentiated characteristics. The common cells made during embryogenesis to enter one or another tissue and cell lineage are not irreversible. So under certain conditions, cells can move from one differentiated lineage to other. For example, epithelial cells can be transformed or differentiate to mesenchymal cells. This is called EMT, epithelial mesenchymal transmission, which is the first step of metastasis. Cancers develop progressively. All right, a broad spectrum of tissues uh, with intermediate a broad spectrum of tissues with intermediate appearance lies between fully normal and highly malignant architecture. So a fully normal tumor doesn't directly become cancer. So there are intermediate steps. The development of tumors is complex and multi-step process. These steps are hyperplastic, metaplastic, dysplastic, neoplastic, and metastatic. Hyperplastic means cells divide only minimally, deviate only, cells deviate only minimally from those of normal tissue. They contain excessive number of cells and able to assemble into tissue normally. So they just lose their control on division. They just divide more. But there is no phenotypical change. Metaplasia. One type of normal cell layer is displaced by cells of another type within the tissue. Invasion, wrong. There, we can see invasion and mislocation here. Invader cells appear normal. So be careful here. If the invader cells have the same, cells, uh, same cell phenotype, then it's still metaplasia. Epithelial transmission zones with, within one type of epithelium meets another, junctions of cervix uterus or junctions of esophagus and stomach. Uh, squamous epithelium is replaced by secretory epithelial cells uh, by metaplasia. Next step is dysplasia, slightly more abnormal tissue. The cells 
are abnormal cytologically, which means the cell phenotype is different. When you look under microscope, you see something different, a different cell shape. Variability in nuclear size and shape, increased nuclear staining by dyes, increased ratio of nuclear to cytoplasmic size, increased mitotic activity, lack of cytoplasmic features of normal tissue cells, in dysplastic growth, the relative number of cells seen in normal tissue not seen. Effects of tissue on tissue architecture. So uh, tissue architecture uh, starts to be disturbed at this point, dysplasia stage. Dysplasia is a transitional state between benign and pre-malignant stage. More abnormal growths are adenomas, polyps, adenomatous polyps, papillomas in skin, wart, and these are pre-invasive growths. Next step is neoplasia, growth invade underlying tissue. So be careful, that means the epithelial cells, the misfunctioning epithelial cells uh, break the basal lamina, and they move into the other tissue, connective tissue. This could be benign or malignant. And the next step is metastasis. At the metastasis, metastatic step, the cells go uh, reach the blood flow or lymph flow, and with and the blood carries those tumor cells to the other parts of body. And if they can find uh, proper environment, uh, they can localize that new organ and they can form new tumor colonies over there. This is called metastasis.